plugin of the week is the Universal Audio Oxford Limiter. So uh, the Oxford group, uh, you may be familiar with them, Sonox. And uh, those guys go all the way back to the 1980s. Uh, they actually uh, helped to, that team put together uh, probably the most successful digital hardware console um, uh, for mixing. It was really the one console that sort of set a standard that I don't think any other company really followed up uh, on. And um, some of the products that they create and in, in, in out of that, including the EQ uh, that comes out of that Oxford console, that was the OXF R3 console, um, are still in existence and in use today. So this is a company that has made a line of products that are exceptional uh, for uh, music work, for post-production work, and, uh, and this plugin is no exception. Essentially, it's a four-stage uh, dynamics processor. Um, what we have here is a, a gain stage here. Uh, we'll get into some of the stuff with the threshold and the input gain because this is how it kind of uh, uh, sets up and operates. We have a pre-process section. So this is where you have the attack, release, knee control, and then an interesting feature called auto gain, which we'll get to in a little bit. We have an output section. It has an enhanced section. So there's two parts to it. The enhanced section allows you to create some dynamic control and has a harmonic distortion characteristic which you can mix in or blend in uh, to help uh, with loudness processing. And then um, and then some metering options. We'll get into uh, what the auto uh, comp is. Uh, a peak hold is just on the meter and a dithering for the output. Now um, what this four stage processor does is it allows you sort of a somewhat traditional kind of limiter or a limiting processor but then it gives you the enhancements of all the digital realms. So we have uh, look ahead features in terms of the processing for the limiter. Um, and the way that it can be used uh, will, uh, and the way it primarily would be used is, is more as like a mix bus processor or as a, an output processor, final stage processor limiter for uh, a mastering type of situation. So let's start by using it. Now you can actually get into um, by turning off the auto gain and safe modes here. What you can do is just actually operate this as a normal limiter with attack and release settings and uh, and knee control. The knee control is kind of interesting. So we'll, we'll kind of do to this. What the auto gain uh, really sets up is kind of a long-term constant. So what you have normally with a limiter uh, and many of the broadcast limiters, and, and I think it kind of is using some of that technology, you have like a multi-stage kind of release so that you have an initial quick release for sharper transients, uh, but you don't want that to suffocate the rest of the program material. So you have a quicker release to allow that to sound natural, but then you have a slower release characteristic, which makes up for the more sustained RMS signal. And so it's, it's somewhat along those lines. Um, and in the safe mode, what this does is it prevents any form of clipping whatsoever. So no matter how hard you push this, no matter what attack release settings, uh, knee settings that you set up, and no matter how hard you drive this, it will never clip. Now, um, that doesn't mean that you can't drive it into distortion, but you won't get a digital peak distortion. Um, and what there, uh, what is kind of works from from this mode or the way that this processor works is uh, we'll get into some of the true peak type of stuff. Uh, what's interesting when you deal with limiting is that just because you have a limiter and it doesn't show a clip on the output doesn't mean that you have what's called an intersample peak and that's called today a true peaks meaning that um, on the analog stages or analog conversion stages um, in a consumer level product um, many of those products actually have oversampling technology built into them and what will happen is that uh, a waveform that hits a maximum output will just get squared off but that actually creates a distortion and you would get a um when going through those analog uh output components of a lot of consumer gear when it's really cheap it's just distortion due to the poor quality of the component when it gets to oversampling then you start to actually um get a momentum that sort of drives signal that is greater than what the the output electronics can handle uh what this does is it allows you to uh to compensate for that so when you start to um, set with the auto comp setting, what that does is it auto compensates so that anything that would be uh, a peak as a true peak, so it wouldn't show up on your necessarily on your uh, DBFS meter as a peak, but because it, it that peak signal covers across, a, uh, goes across a couple of samples and is basically squared off, what this does is it compensates and kind of rounds that off so that 
what ends up happening is you basically have a gain reduction for that short period of time where you would have that intersample uh, peak and it would kind of back it off so that you won't have that. And that's a better way of managing the output. Um, and if you don't have a true peak uh, limiter on the back end stage, then you can end up in this type of situation. And then you find that and when you look at a true peak meter and you see those overages, what you end up having to do is you end up having to compensate on some other end, um, bringing your overall output gain down. So the idea of this is that it can be used as a limiter. Now, what we're going to set here and, and where we can start is uh, with the threshold. Now, the threshold is kind of interesting because this becomes an output gain structure here. And uh, so I can actually set this to anything that I want. I can actually bring this down and use it like a normal limiter. Or I could say, this is what I want my output to be. And I could set that output you know, to be minus 1 or whatever it is that I want to do. I can make it minus 0.2. Let's just leave it kind of there and use that as an output stage, giving just a little bit of headroom on the back end. Um, and what you'll do is with the input gain stage, you're going to push this up to drive the signal through the output. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back this off uh, about 10 dB or so, and that's going to give us enough headroom so I can drive this um, and push it. So the signal will, and, and then we can go through some of the settings and talk a little bit about how it sounds and how you would kind of operate it. So what I can do here is I can kind of push this and uh hold on one second sorry let me just kind of bring my memory locations in here uh and zoom back in uh just so i can get to those quickly uh, and you can also see what's going on so let's see here So what you can see here is um, at zero here, um, we have a headroom of up to 18 dB, and that's what you get on the input gain, an 18 dB input gain. Sorry, I can't get that window to not show up. There's probably a way I couldn't find how to do it, so I'm going to try to avoid getting that. Uh, that That's just little information that shows up. Normally, that's just a preference thing that would show up in here, but I couldn't find that setting anywhere to shut that off. So uh, I guess we'll just kind of manage this as best we can. Um, but when I push this up, what I'm doing is I'm pushing the signal beyond actual uh, dBFS and therefore getting right into uh, to gain reduction. Now, because 64-bit uh, processor, we're not dealing with any distortion internal to the plugin. So we can push the gain beyond what would be technically 0 dBFS, crash the gain on that end, and then that becomes also the output stage. So when we set this threshold, you notice it affects the uh the, the not only the uh setting here but also the setting here because that becomes the output setting so it's kind of a way of just uh there are many ways of doing it um some limiters you actually pull down a threshold and it raises the level up um and this one you're just pushing the input gain same basic idea um and and then you could kind of drive it accordingly now the attack time um most limiters when when you work with the attack time um, they usually, like broadcast limiters in particular, they kind of work within a range of about a millisecond. Um, it's, and the limitation there was always with the physical components. So obviously in the plug-in world, we can go you know, practically to instantaneous and with the look-ahead feature, that's more or less what you're getting here. But just within that millisecond, there is quite a range of dynamic control. Also, when you get to the release, it goes from 0 0.05 milliseconds, which is really, really fast. Um, and then you notice the way that this scales, like right here, halfway through the material, I'm only up to 10 milliseconds. And then it goes, but it does start to scale and progressively go up. So by the time I get to the end, it goes over a second in total time. The reasoning for this is that um, quite often to create a loud master, one of the things you want to do is kind of get in and get out quickly. And that will make it more transparent. Um, the longer you make that release, the more you're going to hear the artifact of it. Uh, so we could start here, for example, with a very, I'm not going to go with this fast of release, but maybe I'll start with a couple millisecond release and uh, just kind of start here with this. And uh, actually what I meant to do was kind of go up to here. Do you know how many people own your car? Now, um, this is like the amount of added gain here. And I can see what my true output is. If I go to the this, this is the reconstructed output. So 
So when I'm with the autocom feature in here, what's happening is that uh, signals that are going that would be normally peak output signals are getting clipped off by the limiter. Um, but what this is doing is it, it's sort of making sure that it's rebuilt. Those peaks are rebuilt in such a way that they're not going to create a true peak or an intersample peak. Uh, that's kind of the idea of the way that that holds there. The peak hold here is just creating a little peak hold. Uh, the meter here, uh, the recon meter, that's just saying what is it displaying. So what the numbers that you'll see here will either uh, show you the pre-reconstruction uh, uh, level or the post reconstruction level so you can kind of go back and forth between the two um, and so let's so one of the ways if we have some of a transparent setting is to drive the enhance feature And what this does is this is a way of kind of driving up uh, perceived gain, uh, um, a way of kind of uh, working with the audio signal so that you can enhance um, the output gain without necessarily deconstructing. So if you actually look here, when I raise this up over here, what will end up happening is you'll see that, that some of the average gain level here and dynamic movement starts to shrink as I kind of go up. You're seeing some dynamic movement, believe it or not. You see there's less movement. It's not going down to four, it's staying up higher. This is an exaggeration on the 125% setting. And so this is a way of just sort of um, enhancing it. So a lot of times uh, the way to actually build output gain and uh, a lot of tape saturation is done in a similar way. It's a way of actually compressing to get more RMS level, um, and part of that is through a form of harmonic distortion. Um, and there are many forms of it. It's why analog components are so popular in mastering. Uh, so one of the ways to enhance that kind of characteristic built into this uh, is by running the enhance and kind of pushing that up. Uh, there's also a knee here. What's interesting is that um, with a knee characteristic, when the signal passes above threshold, a hard knee, will kick in the ratio somewhat, you know, almost instantaneously. Or it can be ramped in. And how many dB below it starts that ramp up process is determined here by the soft knee setting. So this allows you to sort of soften the impact of those hits, creating like a soft limiter. So I kind of like it at the harder knee setting, and maybe something in between would be a little bit better. But that actually is a really cool way of uh, just softening something. So depending upon the program material, you may not want it to be as aggressive. And I got a lot of gain reduction going on here. So this is this is a very aggressive processing, the way I have it set up. I want to also show you how we can enhance uh, the attack or let allow the attack to kind of cut through a little bit more by slowing it down. What's interesting is that when you normally slow down the attack, and when you get to brick wall limiters, you don't really see um, an attack setting. It's sort of instantaneous, and that's just what it's meant to be. But with this, because you have the safe mode and you're actually uh, controlling that output signal where those overage peak overages occur, um, then you can actually slow down the attack, which uh, still gets caught on the other end, but has a different characteristic. And this can kind of open up a little bit of the aggressiveness or punchiness of so let's, uh, let's listen to that. Even though it's only a millisecond in total time, you'll be able to hear the difference. So what that does is it actually uh, softens up 
uh, allows the transient to have a little bit more body to it if you really uh, if you really listen to that. And now if I uh, go ahead and put this on the enhance, let's just see what we can do with this. So what this is showing is uh, what it would be if not reconstructed. It's showing you what it is. So it's showing me that I have peak over just a 1.379. Make a reset that because maybe some of the things I was doing affected that. And then if, I, if I'm working in some form of a standard where uh, I want to take the output and bring the output gain down because maybe the uh, max output needs to be, you know, minus 10 or some other number uh, as particular to a, a given broadcast standard uh, and, you know, uh, or, you know, just what it, the level that is you're asked for, you know, if it's music for video or whatever. Um, then, you know, you can output it there, control the output trim. Now that is reflected in this settings over here. Um, so uh, in that respect, you, you can kind of work with it that way. Um, so you'll see that in this, the level that's shown here is uh, reflected in the output trim. That's why I put the trim plugin down at the bottom here to kind of compensate for that, not to blow everybody's brain away. Um, on the output, there's also a dithering stage. Uh, you can dither um, a 16-bit. Uh, or turn it off entirely. Um, there is a um, a form of dither here, which is uh, laid in uh, that's standard. It's a TPDF, triangular probability density function, um, which you know if you're good with that type of stuff, that's cool. And then there's four other forms of uh, shaped uh, noise um, that that can be added in. So if you were dithering this down to 16-bit uh, at the output. Uh, we could then select between any of the four types. Um, with noise shaping, essentially what, you're, uh, what you end up doing is, uh, and the way that it essentially works, this is kind of shifting a lot of the noise towards higher frequencies, uh, generally above 8K with the different, um, different uh, four different types here. I think uh, type 3 has a bit of a dip um, in that um, 10 to 12K range. Uh, so that uh, you don't uh, get any noise energy in there and it shifts it up a little bit higher. Um, so there's there's uh, some different options there. And usually the way that I work with this is to kind of toggle through them and sort of blindly. And if I happen to cross one that feels right, almost more than anything, I stop, look over at it, and then try it again, blind test. And if I keep landing on it, then it's like I'm selecting that one. Otherwise, it's not, you know, may not find any need to do any noise shaping. Also, what's kind of cool is that if you select a noise uh, shape, you can actually determine how much of that you want to add in. So you have some control over the strength of that signal. Uh, the, and the depth of that signal. So that's kind of a unique feature. I don't think I've ever seen that on any other um, uh, output limiter. So uh, a very cool one and actually really great sound. Uh, very uh, transparent for the amount of gain reduction. It's a pretty heavy amount of gain reduction here. Um, and this is not um, in any documentation or anything I've read a multiband doing any kind of multiband processing. Sometimes you get that type of thing uh, inside a, a standard process. So this is just, uh, you know, straight ahead limiting. That's just really, really good. Um, very cool one. And uh, by a company that does uh, a lot of great stuff and, and is easily kind of forgotten about, but they're really uh, big on the pro end, make high quality products, uh, Sonox. Uh, and this is in the Universal Audio platform. It's the uh, Oxford Limiter uh, by Sonox and uh, brought to you by Universal Audio. And that is Zoom Out, Plug-in of the Week.